Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be covering JavaScript loops. Okay, so I'm going to be covering all of these six different kinds of loops one by one in today's video. So let's get right into the first one, the for loop. For loops allow you to do something based off a starting expression, a condition, and then lastly, an iteration expression. Okay, so let's use a for loop to loop over numbers 0 up until 9. Okay, so we can say for right here. Then we can say i, sorry, let i equal to 0. This right here is our starting expression. We're simply defining a variable called i equal to 0. Okay, so this happens once. We are then splitting this by a semicolon. We can then define our condition. So we can say, for example, i less than 10. This is saying we're going to loop as long as i is less than 10. Lastly, we can specify the, uh, the final expression. And this right here is typically used to increment your, um, your starting expression right here. So we're saying essentially for every loop iteration, we're going to increase i by 1. So now we can say console.log pass through i. And if I save this and refresh, we get this right here, 0 up until 9. Now, what if I want to uh, skip one of these numbers? I can do this using continue. Let's go back inside here, and we're going to say right at the top, we're going to say if i is equal to 3. So if that's the case, we're going to say continue. Now, continue is going to simply skip over this iteration. So basically, the code is going to stop right here. It is not going to reach this line right here for number 3. It's going to go right back to the top and it's going to start again for number 4. If I save this and refresh, we get right here 0, 1, 2, skipping 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Okay, so that is the break statement. Sorry, the continue uh, statement. So moving on to the break statement. Okay, so you can use the break statement to essentially just break out of the loop. Okay, so let's say I want to stop at number 7. Let's go back inside here. I'm going to say if i is equal to 7, I'm going to say break right here. So this is basically saying once i is 7, we're going to break out of the loop completely. We're going to go down to right after the loop down here. So this code down here is going to run directly after this break. We're going to break out of the loop. If I save this and refresh, we now get 0 up until 6 because, of course, we broke at 7. And that is the for loop. Moving on to while loops. While loops allow you to do something as long as a condition is true. So for example, let's do let i equal to 0. Then we're going to say just down here, while, then pass through a condition. So I can say i less than 10. So now we're going to run whatever's inside here as long as this condition is true. So we can say right here, for example, console.log and pass through i. Then we can say i++. Plus plus. So now, we're going to, uh, like I said, we're going to run this right here. While this condition is true, every iteration, i is going to increase by 1, giving us the exact same result as we just saw. Let's save this and refresh, and we get 0 up until 9 right there. And that is the basics of a while loop. Very similar to the while loop is the do while loop. Okay, so the do while loop allows you to guarantee that something will happen regardless of the condition, and then it works like the original while loop. Okay, so for example, let's say let i equal to 15. Then we're going to say do, okay, then we can say down here while i is less than 10. Then inside here we can simply say console.log and then pass through i. So now, even though i is not less than 10, this condition is not true initially. This right here is still going to run. If I save this and then refresh, we can see we get 15 right there. It worked perfectly fine, okay, regardless of this condition being true or not. So now, let's say I want to go from 10 down to 0 or 1. Uh, let's go inside here and we can say i minus minus. This will decrease the value of i by 1 on every iteration. We can also make the i starting value 10. 
So in this case here, 10 is not less than 10, but this is still going to run. It is then going to go to 9. 9 is less than 10, so we're going to see it run again. Um, we do need to also say here, and i is greater than 0 to ensure it does not loop infinitely. So now, saving this and refreshing, uh, we can see we get this right here. 10, the initial uh, console log, followed by the 9 down to 1, um, which work like the traditional while loop. Okay, so that is do while right there. Okay, so moving on to the for in loop. Okay, so the for in loop allows you to loop over an object. Okay, so for example, right here, I've got a person object equal to this right here. I've got name, age, and of course, occupation. Now, if I was to say down here, for, then I can say const prop in person. Okay, so that is the for in loop right there. We are looping through the properties of the person. So that is why this is called prop. So now prop is going to be equal to either name, age, or occupation. If I console.log the prop, save this and refresh, we get right here in the console name, age, and of course occupation. Okay, now um, how, do, uh, how do I actually access these values of DOM29 and web developer? Okay, so to achieve that, we can simply say person, then we can use the square bracket syntax and pass through the prop. So now we're basically saying in the person, get the value at the property of props, so of course, age, occupation, and name. So now saving this and refreshing, we get right here, DOM 29 and web developer. That, uh, so that's uh, that's how that loop works. Now, just keep in mind that uh, this only works for string-based properties, which in most cases, like this right here, um, these properties are string-based. Okay, so that is the for in loop. We now have the for of loop. Okay, so the for of loop allows you to loop over iterable objects. Okay, so uh, the most common uh, iterable object in JavaScript is probably arrays. So you're going to want to use this loop right here when looping through arrays. Okay, so for example, let's say const numbers is equal to an array of numbers. We can say, for example, 5, 9, and let's just do 13. Okay, so now we can loop through these numbers by saying for, then const n of numbers. So now n is going to be equal to each number as we iterate through the array. So we can say console.log and then pass through n. If I save this and refresh, we get this right here, 5, 9, and 13. Okay, so like I said earlier, um, the for of is for iterable objects. Okay, so another iterable object in JavaScript is the node list. You can access a node list by running a query selector. Okay, so for example, let's say I want to loop over each one of my uh, list item elements right here on the page. Let's achieve this using for of. Let's go back inside here. We're going to rename uh, this numbers to be list items, okay, equal to right here document.querySelectorAll and pass through here li. Okay, so now we have every single list item on the page inside this uh, node list. So this right here gives you a node list, right? So, like I said, node list is iterable, which means if I say const, uh, we can do uh, li, so const li of list items, I can say console log li. Save this and refresh, and we can see right here we get every single input element, sorry, every single list item element uh, printed in the console, and that is the for of loop. Lastly, we have the for each loop. Okay, so the for each loop is going to be ran directly on arrays themselves. Okay, so let's make a new constant here once again called numbers equal to, let's do 5, 10, and 14. Okay, so now to use the for each loop, we can simply say numbers dot for each. Okay, so it's ran directly on the array itself. Then we can say inside here, we can specify a callback function. So I can say, for example, n comma i. Okay, so right here, 
n refers to each number as we iterate through the array and i refers to the index of that number so of course 0 1 and 2 so if i console.log n then i console.log uh, i okay if i save this and then refresh we can see now we get 5 as the value and then 0 as the index and the same thing for the last two. And that is the for each loop in JavaScript. So um, that is all of those loop types covered. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.